Or so I, fir I guess first uh, I saw you out there at the Lyle Smith statue thing. Your thoughts on uh, being able to do that sort of thing here? How awesome is that? Um, you know, I say we had a coaches club luncheon today, and uh, Dr. Kustra, Kurt, Bart Hendricks, all the people that were involved. Uh, I know I'm not mentioning everybody, putting that together and making that happen. Um, it's big time. I think anytime you walk on a campus, there's a statue of anybody on there uh, that symbolizes that something great has gone on here. And certainly, um, Coach Smith um, didn't set out to get that made, but over his course of time and just his hard work and, and what he's meant to so many people, and you saw the turnout there, um, certainly deserving of it. And it was just neat to be able to, to see him um, look at it and, uh, and be a part of that moment. With uh, you know, I guess you know, flipping switch a bit, you know, to, to Washington State. You know, how are you feeling about the team getting ready for this one, and uh, how, are you, how are you feeling going into it, getting the first home game too? Yeah, I think the prep the last couple of days has been very good. I think these guys have, have uh, switched gears and are focused on uh, preparing for Washington State. Certainly got a lot of respect for them. A Pac-12 team been very good um, statistically in a lot of areas. Got a very good quarterback. Defense uh, has played very well. Special teams much improved. Uh, from what we've seen as well. So, um, you know, our guys are looking forward to being home. And we took a, a long road trip. We put a lot of work into that. Uh, certainly our fall camp prep also included some of Washington State in there as well. And, and these guys are really taking to getting back to work and just being focused for this week and hopefully going out there and, and playing their very best. I was ask you one about Lyle. And uh, I said the tweet you sent out earlier today. You said, you know, wearing cleats and stuff like that. I don't know if you did anything or plan anything to maybe do a little thing to honor him, maybe wear cleats in the game, or? Oh, I, I don't, uh, yeah. yeah tough the fedora act. would obviously be the best, but. Tough, tough act to follow, and I'll just say that. Um, you know, I think he's one of a kind, and I think you leave it that way. Um, that's what, you know, he's he's known for and what he was able to do. Um, all that we want to try to replicate, replicate is, is what we do on the field here, and hopefully that's a win, and just playing well and playing hard and doing it in front of our fans. You know, I thought you were kind of joking around the other day when you said that you were watching dodgeball uh, when it came to the, the physio balls, but Junior said that you were literally watching dodgeball in the spring. <laughs> or, yeah. or how'd, that, how'd that come up, I guess? Yeah, I don't remember. I, I was actually, I was, I was joking a little bit in there, but, um, you know, we had talked about it, and it was something that, we just felt like we needed to add uh, as part of our practice habits. Uh, we block tackle and, and we certainly work on uh, the fundamentals, but this is another one. I think Coach Adams, you know, he does a great job of innovating and finding ways and certainly came up with a very creative way to, to have a little bit of fun with these guys, but also show production on game day. With Junior and Zach having been at Eastern Washington, you know, obviously Washington State played them game one, and those two know that offense pretty well. I mean, do you feel like you guys can, I don't want to say an extra edge, but you know, just kind of knowing that offense and having some of that information here can maybe help you out a little bit? Well, certainly um, some of their players, you'd like to see our guys go out and perform like they did. They did a great job. It wasn't uh, easy either. They made plays in that game, and I was very impressed with their personnel at Eastern Washington. But uh, certainly knowing that staff, uh, Probably the biggest thing is you, you knew what the schemes were, you knew what they were trying to do, and um, but we're different, and, and we've got to go out there and play our game and attack it a different way. Uh, but certainly you watch it, you, you learn from it, and you try to implement maybe some of the things that, that might have worked in that game there. But uh, what I did learn is a lot about some of the Eastern Washington players, because obviously these coaches, you know, they know a lot of those guys, and Zach in particular. Uh, and so I was impressed with hearing some of the stories on those guys as well. Uh, earlier this week, Coach Leach, he was kind of joking around about it, but he said something to the effect that he thinks you guys would secretly rather watch the players practice on non-blue surface. Is, is yeah. that the case? Well, I think majority of our staff are former players here, so I don't think that's the case. Um, we've been on this field for a long time. There's a reason why we, we've all come back. The surface has a lot to do with the blue. Is it crazy to, I mean, this, it's been 30 years since the surface was installed, but it's still such a big deal, it seems like. I mean, when people answer questions about it, it's like it's the, they've never seen it before. It just seems so, so unique. It's unique. It certainly is. And uh, it's one of our trademarks. And, you know, the 30-year mark and all that, my son came out here a few weeks back and played a jamboree game out here. I did that when I was his age as well. So, you know, a little bit personally, uh, there's a lot this blue field has done and have been able to witness it over the years. But I think it's something when, when teams come here, um, and they certainly know about it. I, I know the players that decide to come to Boise State. This is a big part of why they do as well. Darren 
talked a lot about you know how much he's kind of improved you know at, at that middle linebacker spot and you know Joe Kanko it seems like you guys are you know really confident what he can do what what is it about Darren that not a lot of people see him at linebacker but it seems like he yeah. stepped up in that aspect. Darren's always been a good linebacker right you know he's gotten that special teams label because of what he does on special teams he does the same thing at linebacker and certainly we're excited about his opportunity to play and uh, you know, he's more than ready he's prepared himself and um, if his number's called, just like he had to do last week, he'll go in there and he'll get himself ready to, he's getting himself ready to play, but he'll go in there and execute the plays. And the one thing about Darren, uh, we trust him. We know that he's going to give great effort and we know that he's going to be able to direct and help guys out there uh, in the back and in front of him. Is your equipment staff sneaky? Because he says that sometimes he'll like maybe break a face mask, but they just won't tell him that they'll go, you know, fix it so that way he doesn't, you know, he doesn't know how to slow down a bit. Uh, yeah, I don't know anything about that. Uh, I'm sure it happens, but he's, he's certainly a guy that, that, that brings it. You know, on, and, uh, as far as replacing the, the face mask, I don't know anything about that. Jake, Jake that, uh, I mean, again, I don't know, he didn't have a catch, I don't believe, last week, but he uh, made a couple impactful plays still. I'm just, yeah. just kind of curious uh, his development, how he's coming along, and uh, despite the fact maybe he didn't have a catch, did he impress you or open, open your eyes a little bit yeah, last He certainly week? did. You know, Alec Daines caught more in one game than he caught all last season. You never know how it's going to go. It's just kind of opportunities he got, these guys get. Certainly Jake was a target on uh, a few of those pass plays, but um, that's not what we're about. We're about whatever is necessary to help the team win. And he's a, a total guy that understands that concept. And he did a great job in the run game, did a great job in the pass game, uh, played every single play hard. And, and we were very impressed with just his effort. And certainly are very happy with where he's at right now. That block that he had on AJ Richardson's catch in the fourth quarter, that might have, that was right in front of your sideline. So I don't know if you saw it, oh, I saw it. in action. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw it. You could see it coming, and, and you could see him redirect and and go ahead and, and find his uh, his defender out there. And, and that's just playing hard. I think that's the one thing. Again, you know, it's just getting everybody every play. Every play is its own play, and go out there and play as hard as you can every single time. And, and Jake certainly did that. And I thought a lot of our guys, the majority of the team, did that every time we went out there. But Jake continues to do it in practice. Um, he's had to do a lot for us. He's had to learn a lot. Short amount of time and just continues to keep excelling each week.